Hey guys, so today I have an interesting video. It's a review on the La Mer foundation and powder. I always wanted to try it. I've heard really good things about the foundation specifically. The powder, I haven't seen that many reviews. So I have combination oily skin, just so you're aware. Yeah, if you're interested to see, please keep watching. Okay, so I've been wanting to try this foundation for a while. And it is quite the expensive foundation. It's the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation, SPF 20. Okay, so that's good. I got it in 110 shell. So it's a nice heavy glass bottle. So I like that, at least it's not cheap packaging. So it says, apply prior to sun exposure. So basically this is the thing with La Mer. Their foundation is skincare and not just makeup. They have this thing called their miracle broth and basically they put it in all of their products. When you're paying such a high price tag for this foundation, you're also paying for the skincare benefits. That's obviously a positive. I'll just read what the miracle broth is. Formulated with nutrient rich sea kelp and other pure ingredients. Cell renewing miracle broth immerses skin in the legendary healing powers of the sea. At the heart of every La Mer treatment today, it helps transform with every drop. So, I mean, they're obviously a reputable company, so it's not like they're lying. So essentially, because they're infusing all their products with this miracle broth, that's why they have such a hefty price tag and they are a luxury beauty company. So their price tags will be higher. On Sephora, it's 155 Canadian and it's a weightless, natural-looking foundation with buildable coverage for luxurious long wear, and it's a medium coverage, natural finish, for normal, dry combination and oily skin. Okay, so I prime my skin with my normal primers because I obviously want to see how it would look with my regular routine, and I'm going to use a sponge to apply it just because I know it's safe. There are some foundations that don't work well with brushes and a sponge normally will give you like a nice even finish. And just for reference, I'm extremely fair. So I got the lightest color. And also what I'm gonna be comparing it to my all time favorite foundation, which is the YSL Touche Cla. It is literally incredible. It smells divine. It smells like cucumber freshness. It gives me such a nice weightless coverage looks like my skin, looks even, it matches my skin tone very well, and it doesn't look cakey, it looks natural, it's just beautiful, beautiful foundation, I highly recommend. So we'll see if this matches up to this. Also, excuse my arm if you guys see this, look at this, look at this. So I'm fair, right? I normally am, I put on SPF on my face every time I am near the sun, and normally I put it all over my body if I'm like wearing anything that shows any skin. I went out by the water the other day and I was wearing like a sweater, but I rolled up my arms because it was getting sunny and so I didn't have any SPF and I didn't even think about it. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, oh, gorgeous. That's where the line of my sweater sleeve was. And now we have a nice beautiful burn and tan and skin is peeling sick love it okay the sponge i'm using is the hank and henry sponge it has a pump which is good that looks pretty liquidy i'm just gonna dot it all over my face <laughs> This is the struggle of, of fair-skinned people. The lightest colors of foundation usually is not light enough, which is the case right now for me. This is a shade too dark. 
It's hard to tell. It's easier to see in person that there is like a line of demarcation. It's fine because I'm used to this because this happens with the majority of foundations that I get. It's just funny 2020 and companies forget that really fair skinned people exist and really deep skinned people exist. So I don't know, but that's fine. So I'll come closer to show the finish. It is truly a medium. However, I did use so you could probably see right there, like dark, light, whatever. Um, I did use six pumps though, not because of the coverage, it just didn't go a long way. Like I had to do two on this side, two on this side, and then two on my forehead. Obviously I would prefer for two pumps to cover my face, but it's, it's okay. I, it's not really a huge deal for me. It is 30 mils, it's the standard size for foundation. So I do have a large collection, so I'm not like dying to have so much of it, but I'm not gonna lie. It looks beautiful. Like it looks like my skin, but even, and it covered the redness. So I'm pretty impressed. You know, even the scarring that I have on top of my lip is covered. I don't know. And it has like a nice satin finish. That's why it looks, it just literally looks like my skin. Like I'm blown away, I'm not gonna lie. Like it's stunning. Also, another thing I wanted to mention is that the scent of the foundation lingers. Like I can smell it on my face. So if fragrance irritates you, then maybe you wouldn't like this. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup the way I normally do it and then come back to do the powder because I got the powder as well. Everything looks even and sculpted and the products I used on top laid on top really nice. So, ooh, I really like it. I was expecting to like it because it's a favorite of many, but now I understand what it is that people like so much about it. So now it's powder time. It's just called La Mer the Powder. So very much like the foundation frosted glass it's not plastic which is nice to see and the amount of powder that comes in it is eight grams so for reference the laura mercier powder has 30 grams i believe so it is significantly less but it might be because it weighs less like the actual powder so it's not exactly a measure on volume but We'll see. So it comes with this puff thing that I will never use. See, look how deep in it goes. Like that's, 
that shows how little powder there is in comparison to the packaging. But I mean, like, we'll see. Um, I always take the, oh my god, I have a burn on my hand too, like, that's peeling. I didn't even, okay, I'm literally never leaving the house without sun lotion, even if I'm wearing clothes from head to toe, like, I can't. Okay, I normally take the sifter off because I hate having the sifter. I think when most people say that, oh, it keeps it nice and neat and, you know, for travel and all this stuff, that is, I don't know what they're talking about because when you dip the powder in here, like this is filled with powder and makes a giant mess once you top, put it on top, close it, then it's like powder all over. Whereas when you take the sifter off, you have easy access to the powder because it's just powder. And then you close it and it just seals, no problem, and no powder comes out. So easy to travel. I do that with literally every single powder that I use. And I just like, I just, and, and like when I open it, it's nice and clean because like the powder will just touch this area, but it won't be like swirled all over in there. Like everyone swirls their, bro I don't know. It's just a thing. It's just a tip that I'd like to share with you guys. And then it's easy access. You can dip your sponge into it. You can dip a giant brush into it. You don't have to like sit there all day sifting it out. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna remove that and then dip into the powder. I took it off. This one was actually a lot more easier than some other containers. I'm looking at the powder and it is very little. So let's see. I can show do you see how little that is it looks like it's like a used powder you know so like that's disappointing it's pretty expensive I'll tell you the amount it's $120 Canadian so let's hope that this powder is just as good as the foundation <laughs> My foundation has been set beautifully. I still have that skin effect. It doesn't look cakey or anything like that. It's not sticky still. I didn't have to use that much powder. It just like, once I put it on, I didn't have to pack it on. It would just, it set it, sealed it, good. It didn't make my foundation oxidize because again, another thing that can happen with um, people who are more fair skinned, you put on a foundation, then you put on a powder, even if the powder is translucent you put it on and then it darkens the foundation instantly the worst and it, so many powders do that so this one doesn't do that so another pro cons the scent i'm so not big on scented products so this one's not a con on the actual product because i do think it's a beautiful product i think it's just more suited for people with dry skin i have oily skin oily combination and Although my skin looks radiant and set, it's not set enough to stop from the oils coming through. Another thing is that my pores have not been smoothed out, which may not be a bad thing it, because it does look nice and natural, you know? But I, I do have pores. It is something that like, I don't necessarily like being visible. And again, maybe with someone dry skin who doesn't have visible pores, maybe it wouldn't be an issue but I like powders to smooth out the skin. Like the Laura Mercier one does that, the Pretty Vulgar powder does that, the Ciate one does that. So there are a few that are successful at doing that, but this one is not doing that for me. And maybe that's not one of the aims of the products. You know, the aim is to make it look natural and radiant, which it does. 
So I don't know, I'm kind of like, you know, not in love. It's not terrible, but it's, it's definitely not something I would repurchase. Whereas the foundation, like if I finished it, I'd probably repurchase it. And I'd say as a partnership, like of a collection, they do match their aim perfectly. And like, they're both radiant. They're both a natural satin finish. Like they do the job that they say they're gonna do. I just don't think the powder is suited for somebody with oily combination skin. Now I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and speed that through and then come back with my final thoughts.
guys, I'm doing my final thoughts on this foundation and powder. So, basically what I can see is that all the powders that I used, all the regular makeup I used laid really nicely on my face, no issues. My skin looks natural, it doesn't look dry anywhere, it doesn't look cakey. But the pores are visible and honestly, I don't mind it. You know, I think it looks good. I think it looks fine. So the foundation I would definitely wear again. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. For the powder, however, um, I don't think, like no, basically is my answer. I would probably, like I will use this and I will finish it up, but it's definitely not up there with my favorites. I can see where they were going with it because it does give a nice radiant satin finish and it's probably better suited for dry skin as opposed to my skin. It still looks good. I still would wear this out happily and, you know, love it. Um, but I wouldn't like go to work. I wouldn't go to school. I wouldn't go out in the sun where I could like, you know, get hot and my makeup would melt off my face. Like this is the kind of look that would last like only a couple of hours. You know what I mean? It's not um, long wearing for me. However, I'm going to try that foundation with my regular powders and see how that goes because maybe it'll last longer because that foundation, the finish is stunning. So that is how I feel about that. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, you know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want more reviews as well. My next video for sure is going to be a full face of Natasha Denona and I do have a lot of products like more than the average person who does Natasha Denona reviews, I have like full face primer, even eyeshadow primer, I have hers. So yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.